Hello. I'm signing on to YouTube. Hey, Joseph. Welcome back, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How was your break? Oh, just marvelous. <laughs> Why don't I believe you? <laughs> A lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps you out of trouble. Right. Hey, big guy. Hey, Dennis, how you doing? Good. Good to see you again. You too. As soon as I see your picture. I was getting ready to say. It'd be good to see. <laughs> I see Mr. Dan. There's Dan. Hey, gentlemen. Hello. Hey, Terry. Oh, oh, my goodness. Hey, Wasn't long enough, right, Joe? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Everybody here is or just us? Gary, is that supposed to be on YouTube now or not? Uh, it is streaming, yes. It's also recording on the cloud. Okay, I have uh, YouTube on, and all I see is the uh, former Board of Control meeting says live still yeah my well mine says live as well i don't have i don't have another uh, hi paul hello <clears throat> hello charlotte howdy did you check into that joke because i couldn't get into that meeting you couldn't no not until the end <laughs> oh I thought I, I thought that you were just gonna check in through the, the website. Today. Yeah, I was, but I couldn't oh. get into it till the very last. Really? Until the hmm. end of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you, we have a lag of like seven minutes if you go to watch. Oh, gotcha. And then I I had to go back and look for it several times before I <clears throat> it won't show up for us until. So is that? But then I see email where it's being changed to 30. Yeah, it is. So that took care of that. We are streaming live on YouTube, so we're good. That's good. Not on my YouTube or not. I'm so surprised because I probably got that seven minute lag. I'm still looking at the marriage picture, the last scene of the board of control meeting. Yeah, that's all I got to see live. I'm sick of these Zoom meetings. I haven't even had one for a while and I still don't appreciate it. Charlotte, no coffee? <laughs> I'm almost done with that. <laughs> Who are we waiting on? Is Justin joining us tonight? Well, I, I hope be you're seeing Paul. Okay. I mean, okay. uh, Scott. Scott's here. Everybody's here except we're just waiting for Justin to sign in. Well, this thing changed. I actually oh, had to tell the video to come on before my picture showed up. There we go. They did some updates to the Zoom program. Never went a little farther. I don't see Scott still. 
That's because I don't have the video on. <laughs> well, that, that, that wouldn't matter, yeah. Oh, I knew I had it turned I, off. I was just... Uh, he doesn't uh, want to be seen yet. That's there it. You go. <clears throat> All right, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven council members, mayor, administrator, finance director, law director. We're good. We're good to go in our, in our first speaker. All right, seven o'clock. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm having trouble getting this. I don't see a speaker. Okay. I had to change the batteries in the MP3. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good now? Anybody watching it live? Is it streaming live? Not on mine. It says it's live on YouTube up on the left, upper left. Robert, you're watching it. We're live. Okay. All right, then. Um, <clears throat> I call this Norton City Regular Council meeting to order for Monday, August 24th, 2020. Please rise for a Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silent reflection. <clears throat> One nation, One nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice. Okay, be seated, please. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Gaynor? Here. Mr. McLone? Here. Mr. Karen? Here. Mr. Towsley? Here. Ms. Whipke? Here. Mr. Pilot? Here. Mr. Kernan? Here. Communications from the public under letter A, we have Ryan Nelson from Red Tree Investment. Uh, Ms. Keener, did you want to introduce or say a few words? Um, actually, I'll just let um, Ryan introduce himself. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you, Pam. Um, well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for the time um, here tonight uh, <clears throat> to uh, talk to, um, to council uh, via Zoom um, from far away. The, um, um, the reason for the presentation here tonight, just a little bit of background, um, the city currently um, has um, an investment advisor at um, UBS Securities. And um, uh, Pam has inherited that there from the previous finance director. Um, and Pam has asked me to come in and talk about uh, what our firm can do for the city and how we assist other uh, cities across uh, Ohio. So that's, that's the reason uh, for the, the presentation here tonight. So we'll keep it short and, and sweet. If you got any questions, wave your hands or whatever you need. And, and Pam, I'm gonna share the screen. Is that okay with everyone there? Yep. Do so, yep. It should be fine. And the host has disabled the screen sharing, so. Oh, that would be me. Um, everybody did receive a copy of your presentation. Okay. In the in the full page form. Okay. And if you, uh, I think if we can re-enable the share screen, um, it's down at the bottom. Um, Carrie, I believe uh, it's your choice is down at the bottom. Yeah, I see it, and um, but I, I believe that the administrator has set these up for us. Okay. Okay. If you want to just go ahead and go through those, we'll just follow with the information that we have. We'll go along with it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk our way through it here okay. uh, as well, but this is basically what you should be looking at. Um, that's in the packet. Uh, just a little bit of background on page two about Red Tree Investment Group and who we are. We are a firm that solely focuses on the investment of public funds across the state of Ohio. We're located in Cincinnati 
And we um, advise on nearly $5 billion of funds here in the state of Ohio. And we work with over 200 public entities, including and schools and whatnot out there. We're independent, we are experienced, and this is our, again, our sole focus of what we do. On page three, I included just uh, a representative client list out there. It's hard to put 200 people on one page, so we've got it narrowed down there just a little bit for you there. Um, cities that we work with um, and some schools and other entities you know, just right there in your backyard, we do work with uh, the city of Barberton and, and Barberton schools just, just right down the road um, and have for, for many years. But that just gives you a flavor of some folks that we do work with and assist on their investments. Uh, the next page, just a quick snapshot of who you're talking to here is the, um, um, the investment team. Myself and Jennifer, Jennifer Trowbridge do own the firm and we're the co-founders of the firm. Um, this marks my 20 20th year in this business of managing funds for public entities out there. On page five, I want to just take a second to talk about the investment objectives of investing public funds, such as Jordan. <laughs> Remember, you have three main investment objectives, and that's safety of principle, that's liquidity, and that's market rate of return. You keep those in order and you keep yourself out of trouble. Um, none of us are ever going to be in the newspaper for earning an extra penny, but all of us will be in the newspaper if we lose a penny. And we have to keep that in mind when we're making investment decisions out there. Um, so that um, keeps us out of trouble. On page six is the permitted investments of the city. The city has an investment policy statement. They follow the Ohio Revised Code Chapter 135. The um, policy was last revised in February of 2017. And it includes a, the um, listing of securities that you see there on the page. Um, I did talk to Pam about this last week just reviewing the um, current investment policy. The current investments are not in compliance with the policy um, as we <clears> understand. <throat> um, so that's something that we would have to work with Pam on. Nothing illegal, nothing unsafe. It's just you. Uh, the, the policy has a, a strict diversification re um, requirements and it's out of diversification right now. So that's something that we would have to work on. Again, nothing that you would lose money on or it's an illegal investment. It just comes down to being out of compliance. And that's something that um, we certainly wanna be in, um, be in compliance with the policy. Any questions on that before we move on? Um, on page seven, just real quick about the expectations here at Red Tree. We are an investment advisor and we would work with the, the city on developing an investment plan and putting that plan together. We have strict risk, risk controls as it relates to following the investment policy statement maintaining and monitoring the portfolio uh, and having a disciplined investment approach. Um, and Pam um, has worked with us in the past and she understands that communication is key when making investment decisions out there. We cannot make investment decisions unless we have a direct communication back to the finance director and to the city. Um, and we um, uh, probably over communicate um, out there um, um, and, and bug, bug our clients to death to get information. Um, and then lastly is our reporting. Uh, we uh, do all the investment accounting and reporting for our clients um, out there to make it very simple for the uh, finance directors to, to balance the, the books um, and then assist with um, annual audits um, from there. On page eight, just wanna to talk to you real quick about the, the roles and duties of the various parties that would be involved. Certainly it starts with the city of Norton, uh, performing the due diligence on the investments, providing uh, cash flow needs. What are the needs of, of the city? Um, uh, Pam did provide me with the capital plan uh, uh, possibilities over the next couple of years, um, but uh, to, to work through with that. Uh, communicate the progress back to council. Um, I do need to point out there's someone that sets between us and the city, and that's uh, a third, what's called a third party custodian. Um, and they actually hold all of the assets of, of the city. And that, you as a, an investor, that's what you want. You want to have yourself, you wanna have an investment advisor, and then you want someone that stands in the middle that holds the securities. So you get a, a, an investment report from us and you get an investment report from, from US Bank. So there can't be any mucking of numbers or, or something like that. Um, so that is, that is key as in, in the security. <coughs> uh, so US Bank does serve as a third party custodian. And then here at Red Tree, we do again serve as the investment advisor, uh, putting together the investment portfolio and, and reporting and, and doing all of the monthly reports for, for Pam and her office. 
On page nine, just to wrap it up here, next steps with Redtree. Uh, again, we would serve as the investment advisor. The city does have uh, securities that are, that are held at, at UBS and we would work with Pam on, it's, it's a transfer of those securities over to US Bank. Nothing is sold. There are no fees involved with that. Um, it is a simple transfer. That's something that we do quite often um, here at Red Tree. Uh, once um, everything is over there and accounted for, we then um, we're off to the races about what to do um, best with the funds following the investment policy. Getting it in line would be number one as well. How, how all of this works, we do serve as an investment advisor. We're big on transparency about what uh, the fees are and our fees uh, work on how much money we actually manage back here in the office. Uh, currently the, the investment portfolios are right around eight and a half million dollars. The, um, and our fee is 10 basis points um, uh, annually on that. That equals, um, what is 10 basis points? That's basically $1,000 per million is for easy math on that. Uh, the, the city, um, that would be a savings of about $1,700 from what they're currently paying the provider. So there is a savings there with that. Uh, we only charge fees on what we manage. Uh, there are no commissions or markups. There's no hidden cost out there. We're huge on that. And also we pay all the U.S. bank custodial fees um, out of our fee. So there's not an additional, I don't like being nickel and dimed as a business owner. And um, we don't want to do that to our clients as well. So it is a transparent, all-inclusive uh, fee arrangement out there. Um, any questions? I think so far what I'm hearing is our advantage is right off the bat is like $1,700 we might be saving and that we're coming in compliance with state regulations. Is that right now to to this point, those are the two main uh, that, those, advantages? Uh, certainly getting it in, in compliance is, would be uh, number one. The fees are, are less. Uh, the communication uh, is is by far uh, uh, paramount, and simply this is all that we do. UBS is a is a is a multi global firm out there that manages money for everything in the world, um, and um, not disparaging them by any means, but this is all that we do when we wake up in the morning um, is focus on the needs of of public entities here in the state of Ohio. And the investments that would we would be invested in. Are they pretty much boilerplate for all the cities and all the municipalities? It's pretty much all the same plan. There's not any uh, such thing as um, you don't manipulate different things for different groups. It's all pretty much the same for all of us out here. It's the, that's exactly right. So everybody, everyone we have here has the same concerns that you have as it relates to not only investing, but I know you in today's world with, with COVID-19, you know, your concerns of revenue and and um, everything like that. So we, um, we, we, we know what you're dealing with there at the, at the city. Thank you. And, this, go ahead. Go ahead, Charlotte. Oh, what's this $2,700,000? Is that what would be invested or? No, that's actually a different, um, that's different legislation that will be wrapped for, um, forward later on. That's actually, we're working, um, we had on the Board of Control a um, approval to enter into an agreement with a municipal advisor not to exceed 34,400. So the amount was wrong on there. The amount we're refunding in bonds is at 2,700,000. So this, um, so we're doing our, uh, we're, our bonds are callable in December. So we're actually refunding those bonds. So we're working, okay. with, we're working with a municipal advisor and so their fee is the 34,500 I just mentioned, but this is something totally different than our investments. Okay. Was there, an, was there another question? Uh, yes, would all the investments be made within the United States or would they be global? Uh, well, that's an excellent question. And um, one that we have to address with, uh, with council and, and the finance director, um, under the Ohio Revised Code, um, you can purchase, um, for example, you can pur purchase short-term commercial paper, which is a, a short-term debt obligation of a company. And um, you, you, for example, you could own the Toyota Motor Company is a, is a legal investment that the city could own. Um, the question begs is, is that something that you want to own? 
just because a code and just because your policy allows it, you have to ask yourself, what is, what's the risk tolerance of, of counsel and the finance director? And we have to flesh that out. Okay. So we get to decide that. We would be having those discussions with you. The last place we wanna be is, is for you to receive a statement and see something on a statement that you don't like. Uh, so we need to have that, um, <laughs> we want that aired out well in advance. Will there be a uh, list of investments that your company has made shortly? Or how long will it be before we see the list of investments that you're making? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, we'll be working with Pam. I don't know what Pam provides you on a, on a uh, normal basis. Uh, you know, again, the, the city does own a, 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 a fair amount of securities already. Um, we, I, we are big on communication. And, and one thing we do work with is coming up with what it is best for council to see. What is it you want to see? And every, every city is a little bit different, obviously, about what they want to see. So um, if we will be talking to you about what you want to see and when you want to see it. I would like to see a continuous list of the investments myself so I'll know what we are investing in. Okay. There might be some of them that I wouldn't want to be invested in. We will, we will mark that down and, um, and, Pam, and work with Pam on, on what uh, works best for everybody there on council, including yourself. Thank you. And Ryan, over the last say, five years, what's your guys' average rate of return for other municipalities? That is um, a, a, a great question and one very hard to answer. Um, we work with 250 some odd public entities and just as we've had this conversation here, all 250 of you may have a different risk tolerance and a different idea um, about investing. Um, so it's, it is extremely difficult to have a general rate of return, um, but something I can put together for you. That would be a, a general, you know, just a general idea about there about how, how things have performed over the past five years. Unfortunately, in the world that we're living in right now, interest rates don't look all that great. So um, right. what, what happened over the past five years <laughs> um, is uh, gonna be hard to replicate um, in, in, today's, in today's world. Just to, just, to, just to forewarn you. Okay. But certainly get it for you. I'd appreciate it. We've Any lost Go ahead. We lost your sound. Can't hear you, Ryan. Can anyone else hear me or is it just? No, I, I, hear. I can hear. I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you now, but okay. the last statement you made, I didn't No, I'm, I'm in Cincinnati. Maybe it was just taking a while for it to. The, That's the, what it is, I'm sure. What it is. They come up uh, 71. <laughs> um, any other questions that I can help answer here today? But with that, I appreciate your time out there. Pam, thank you very much for having me here tonight. Looks like you have a full agenda out there tonight. So um, I'm going to, um, to wrap it up here and say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, um, on to Akron Zoo update, which is uh, B. Um, we have just a statement here um, that they wished for us to read into the record. So, um, Carrie, do you want to do that? Okay, this is um, to the Norton City Council, Akron Zoo update. The Akron Zoo is one of the most visited attractions in Summit County with over 400,000 visitors in 2019. The zoo is a special place where kids love to learn and families come to spend quality time together. It is also an economic and community asset supporting over 850 jobs and generating nearly $8 in economic impact in Summit County for every $1 of public support received, adding over half a billion dollars to the Summit County economy since 2011. The Akron Zoo's mission is to connect your life to wildlife while inspiring lifelong learning and conservation action. There are a number of statistics that are listed on this paper and I will post this 
to the website. They have bulleted items discussing how many people have been to the zoo, school districts reached, et cetera, et cetera. Um, giving back, Summit County Community Appreciation Days. Since 2000, the Akron Zoo has hosted Summit County Community Appreciation Days for all communities. Because of COVID, things are a little different this year. Residents will still be able to get tickets, but they must get their tickets online for a specific time slot as the zoo is only permitted to allow a limited number of guests in the park at one time. City of Norton Community Days, the dates for complimentary tickets are available online between September 11th and September 25th. The visit dates will then be between September 26th and October 9th. Your community will have 14 days to choose from during the two week visit period, September 11th to September 25th. I'm sorry, that's, I think that's a typo, it should be what they said earlier, the visit dates are September 26th to October 9th. Norton residents will be able to get free tickets online by going to the zoo's website, www.akronzoo.org. There is a page on the zoo's website with step-by-step -step instructions on how to secure free tickets. Supporting the zoo. This November, the zoo will be on the ballot asking Summit County voters to support a 0.8 mil renewal with a 0.4 increase for 10 years to support our programs, operations, and growth. The levy will cost the owner of a $100,000 home $2.92 per month. This is the first time since the original levy passed in 2000 that the zoo is requesting an increase in funding. November 2020 levy. The successful levy this fall will provide more science-based STEM education and outreach programs for students throughout Summit County. Keep your zoo affordable for all families while expanding educational opportunities. It will continue to support exceptional care and welfare for more than 1,000 animals, including endangered species. It will add more animals and habitat, including giraffes. If residents would like a yard, they can request one at www.voteacronzoo.org. That's the end of the announcement. You said that you would go ahead and post that on the website? <laughs> That's correct. All right, thank you. Um, we're moving on then to a correspondence communications from the public. Um, and I understand that we, we received a couple of them. So Carrie, if you could read those into the record. Okay, this one is Dear City Council Members. My husband and I reside at 3866 Golf Course Drive. This letter is to inform you, our City Council, of the concerns we have in regards to the Planning Commission's resolution number 5 2020 from their meeting on July 28, 2020, which was in regards to application SPR 5 2020, the development of Brookside Golf Course. Concern number one, we have reviewed the plans for this development, watched the Zoom meeting for the Planning Commission, and have reviewed the Planning Commission resolution number 5-2020. We notice that the resolution still does not address the issue of our road, Golf Course Drive. This is quite a problem. We know that the Planning Commission members addressed this issue with the developer and engineer during the meeting. We heard, slash, saw, Robert Fowler say that there are plans already in the works to address this issue directly with city council. But he did not say what those plans were. If there are plans already being made in regards to our road, why is no one telling us what they are? I feel that we are intentionally left in the dark as to what is to become of the only entrance and exit to our home. While we appreciate and are thankful that there seems to be no traffic up and down our road, the question still remains, who is going to be responsible for the maintenance, repairs, and plowing of Golf Course Drive? Concern number two. Statement number three in resolution number 5-2020 states that the Planning Commission, quote, recommends a buffer be considered between the backyards of the development and Shellheart Road to preserve the integrity and rural nature of the neighborhood, unquote. 
And again, what about the buffer for those of us who live on Golf Course Drive? Again, I feel we are being intentionally left out. If the Planning Commission feels it is important for the buffer for Shellheart, then it is as equally important to provide the same for us residents at Golf Course Drive. Please consider the view of all of us who are living around this development, not just one side. There will be many things other Norton residents will have issues with in regards to this development, but I am pleading with you to remember those of us on Golf Course Drive. Please keep us informed as to what it is, what is being planned. We have the most to lose in this deal. And if no one helps us, please do not overlook our situation. Thank you. Heather and Sam Hairston, 3866 Golf Course Drive. Thank you. I believe there's another one. Do you want me to take a turn? I can do that. All right. From Timothy and Janice Back, 3856 Golf Course Drive, Norton, Ohio, 44203. We reside at 3856 Golf Course Drive. Our names are Timothy and Janice Back. We've resided here for over 30 years. I, Janice Back, grew up in Norton and have lived in Norton for over 50 years. There are three points of concern for us uh, for us as the Barberton Brookside land development moves forward. One, is being requested that a nature scape or buffer be developed to blend the new development into what is already a rural setting. We understand that this has already been requested by the Planning Commission for, for Shellheart Road. We are not quite sure why the Planning Commission did not include the golf course drive side in their request. Both sides of this development are equally important. Two, there has been research performed and phone calls made about selling or refinancing homes on golf course drive. The possibility of someone obtaining a loan to purchase any home on Golf Course Drive is very low if the title search cannot determine by the deed who maintains the road. It is also a low possibility for any of us to obtain a, re to obtain a refinance loan on our homes if the title search cannot determine by the deed who maintains the road. <clears throat> a conventional loan would not be approved if maintenance of the road is not clear in the deed, which could cause our homes to become stagnant in the marketplace. Number three, lastly, as winter approaches and the snow flies and potholes open back up and new ones form, who is going to maintain Golf Course Drive? We are hoping that this determination would be settled before this project begins, not sometime during the project or down the road. Because this has been passed on to council's table, we are assuming that the Planning Commission has responsibly approved this project and now is up to council to either, either bless or deny the project. We are asking that our city officials be people oriented and not just project driven from the silence that is hovering over these matters mentioned above it's just human nature for people to fear the worst open communication would be appreciated during this process this is our home we would like to be a part of its development projects there are many intelligent peaceful people living here in norton we would like to have the opportunity to be a part of the audience during this development respectfully timothy and janice back all right and Mr. I, President. Yes, uh, Mr. Towsley. Hearing those, uh, I, you know, I think both letters bring up legitimate concerns uh, just for the public's knowledge and for mine. Um, when will this come before council where we will be talking more in depth? So my um, understanding is, well, I'll let Mr. Markey answer that since he just- Yeah, go, go ahead, Mr. Kern, go ahead. And my understanding is, is that it still has to go back in front of the planning commission again. Um, okay. And then it comes to council, at which time they will have to pre present to council what their final plat is or their final plan is, and then we yep. take a look at it from there. That is all yep. still in flux. That's that's not any of that has not been written in stone at this point, is my understanding, Mr. Markey. Yeah. So there's two there's two separate criteria they have to meet. One relates to the site plan. The only thing that's occurred so far is a preliminary site plan. Where the where council will get involved on the site plan side is when a final site plan has been considered and approved by planning commission that hasn't been applied for yet, that hasn't been considered yet. So until that happens, uh, or, or once that happens, council then gets involved and considers the uh, site plan, any comments they may have. But until that time, there's nothing for council to do. The other side and the other thing that needs to be done with regard to the development is a subdivision. So there's the actual plat in the map that gets recorded. And there's a number of criteria that they have to, any developer of that property is going to have to meet for the plat. And there's a preliminary and final stage for that as well for the subdivision. 
So my, uh, I was discussing with Mr. Fowler earlier today, I think we're gonna put together a timeline and sort of a summary memo for council and for the public. So everyone understands the steps that go along on a development like this and understanding when council gets involved, what approvals are necessary and what that timeline looks like. But we're not there yet and uh, there's nothing before council at this time. So would it, would it be fair to say maybe by next Monday we could present to residents uh, at least an approximate timeline so they know when it's going before planning? Yeah, I mean, the, Mr. Towsley, the timeline is going to depend on how the developer decides to proceed, if at all, okay. right? Uh, but what we can show them is once they decide to proceed, once those applications go in, here's what the timeline will look like. So okay. currently, there's no further applications in for any further uh, planning commission action. But we can show them once that does happen, here's what it should look like moving forward. So it, it would be pretty confident to say the next couple of weeks, really nothing's going to happen. I would be very confident to say nothing's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Yes. Okay. I was just trying to give people a, a little idea of what they're dealing with. That's you know, yeah. and, 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 I think it's going to be a, yeah, a longer process for sure. Several yeah. months. And I think it's important. And, and, you know, I know all of council and I, and I think I can speak for all of council and let people know, um, please email us and call us. I mean, you know, that's what we're here for. If you have concerns, Give us a call. If we have the answers, we'll give you those answers. I, I mean, I'm not, you know, if I've got an answer to your question, I'm going to give you the answer. If there is no answer at this point, I'm going to tell you there's no answer at this point. I mean, um, this is this is a process that is moving along and it, it sometimes moves slowly, sometimes moves quickly, but um, that's what we're here for. So give us a call, email us. I, I'm sure all of council agrees with that and, you know, we'll help <laughs> residents along as best we can. Okay. Anything else on those comments so far? We've got a couple more, I think, here. Carrie, you want me to read one more and you take the last one? Um, well, I don't think we're going to be reading the one because it doesn't have an address. That's correct. And what I would like to do is let's um, get a hold of them and have them supply the same thing with an address and we'll read it next week. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. Then you can go ahead and read the uh, last one yeah. then that we have. Well, that was the last one that I had. Did you get I got one? one. I got one through today from uh, John and Deborah Pfeiffer. I did not. Okay, that I, I think maybe Charlotte. Did you get that one too? Yeah, I, I had rewarded one oh. last week even, and I believe it's the same thing. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read it because it came okay. through, and I got it earlier today, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, <clears throat> to the Planning Commission, City of Norton, Ohio, development of Barberton Brookside property, and then it came to me. We are very concerned about the development plans for Brookside and the impact that this development will have on Golf Course Drive itself, both paved and graveled portions. Why is our road excluded from the developer's plans? Deed provisions require all purchasers of Brookside to maintain this road for homeowner's use. Will the City of Norton be taking over our road and providing all maintenance on it? Once Brookside's parking lot is gone, how will large vehicles and heavy and heavy vehicles be able to navigate our road without a turnaround? Will garbage trucks, utility trucks, tree trimming trucks, and fire trucks have to back up or back down the half mile road? We're very grateful that our road is not attached to the new development and would like to keep it that way, but we will still need a turnaround provided. We have concerns regarding surface water drainage. The entire road is already inundated during heavy rains and not so heavy rains by runoff from the properties at the northern end of the golf course. Where will all of the extra runoff from roofs and concrete asphalt ground surfaces end up? The lower end of Golf Course Drive has issues already. Will provisions be made for landscaping along Shellheart and Golf Course Drive? Although we have not been given any information regarding the appearance of the homes to be built, rumor says they are starting at $250,000. It appears to be a double row of 30 homes that sit only 10 feet apart. We are also concerned about the effect this new subdivision will have on the neighboring ones. Will all the roads be widened in Nash Heights to, to accommodate the increased traffic through there? Will Shellheart get sidewalks? How will this affect our schools? We would sincerely appreciate, sincerely appreciate your taking all of this under consideration when making decisions regarding the future of Brookside and Norton. Signed, John and Deborah Pfeiffer, 3764 Golf Course Drive, Norton, Ohio, 44203. All right, does council have any other comments regarding the communications from the public? Uh, just uh, that uh, I have received around 50 letters similar to this. And as you've seen, as we talked about it this afternoon, um, 
I put together eight categories of complaints, suggested, you name it. I'm going to be answering that to the best of my ability, again, as you and I spoke this afternoon, and send that out to council and to those people who have uh, sent those letters to me. Uh, being the Ward 3 representative, they, uh, they've landed on my doorstep quite firmly, and uh, I'm going to do my best to answer some of those questions. And others, I think, are just like we heard tonight uh, for the future. They're not determined, and there's, uh, but they're in the works. And uh, I think good wisdom is going to prevail. But we need to give some information. I think uh, Mr. Marty was correct that we need to give some sort of uh, timeline and plan. I think uh, administration for uh, being willing to put that together. I'd just like to voice my opinion that I strongly agree with these residents as well as I've received a lot of complaints as well. Something does need to be done for a buffer over there. I watched that meeting and I saw that uh, the man that came in, the representative was saying, well, it's not in that zoning that they had to provide a buffer. Well, I don't think it was in zonings for other things either. So if the buffer should be on both sides. As far as I'm concerned, I believe my email back in March stated quite clearly you ought to put trees all the way around it because I don't want to look at it when I drive by. And as far as the road goes, it's a private road. So that's not really up to us. We would need to know what that thing says. And I understand that you guys are working on all this, but a lot of the answers we don't have to even begin to respond in and, and help these people feel any better about it. Me personally, I'm going to state it right now publicly. This, I, this is the, this legislation that allowed this to happen. It's the only legislation in my entire term that I can say I am thoroughly ashamed of approving to allow this to go for something like this to even be created. If I had to had any inkling that we could have had anything brought to us to, to even act like they wanted to put something like this in. I would have fought it tooth and nail. You could have cut my head off and while it was rolling down the sidewalk, I'd been saying no. And I'm irate over it. I have been irate over it. I have been physically ill ever since. I thought it went away in March. I was hoping it, that it had went away. We were, and this is not the administration's part for anybody viewing or hearing this later. They didn't know we were gonna end up with something like that, I'm assured of that. But I was approving and all in favor of putting a senior complex there. And <laughs> this is a monstrosity. To me, it's nothing more than a glorified project. I don't care if they do say they're selling them for 250,000. Norton is not 10 foot a house, 10 foot between houses. And again, I understand you guys are working on this, but you need to let that developer know that some of us are really, really upset. I came this close to just handing in my resignation for having anything to do with that legislation being able to get passed to allow this creation. That's all I got to say. Well, I will just say that we haven't seen the plan yet. Um, and until I do, um, I hate to make a judgment about something that I haven't seen yet. I know what they've projected. So, That's enough. So anything further on this? All right, moving to committee of the whole under A, acknowledgement of the receipt of the May and July 2020 financial report, reports. Um, I so acknowledge that they have been received. Letter B, Rita appointment, Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. As, uh, as you all know, we were CCA, we're moving into Rita and uh, the process requires us to um, appoint a delegate and a, um, an alternate. And uh, we're gonna um, appoint Pamela Keener, the finance director as a delegate. And um, we're gonna appoint uh, Robert Fowler, the city administrator as the alternate. and. Uh, this don't need no uh, legislation. We just need a vote tonight. So with that, I'd like to make a vote tonight to 
have Pamela and Robert be our uh, delegate and our alternate. I'll second. If there's a motion and a second to name uh, Ms. Keener as our delegate to Rita and Mr. Fowler as our alternate. Um, is there anything further that needs to be included in that um, in that motion, Mr. Markey? No, that's to be, that should be sufficient. That's it. Okay, so it, does, it doesn't need timelines or terms or, uh, of appointment or anything. I don't believe so. Okay, we would just does we would just uh, designate a new alternate a new representative should that ever be the case. Okay. Is there any further discussion regarding the motion in the second? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Are you muted, Carrie? <laughs> Loser. Uh, I don't see her. Now you're good. I think I heard you. Uh, Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. Absolutely. Um, just, just, just to intercede, did we acknowledge the receipt of the financial reports? I did. And I missed, yes, I, did. And I missed it. Okay, thank you. Letter C, fire levy ballot language, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Evidently, there's some amendments to the ballot language for for uh, the fire levy coming up. Uh, does that need to be read into the record, or is that not critical? Um, uh, the the I don't think the changes need to be read into the record. We're, we're we are asking that uh, because the board of elections is certifying the ballots pretty pretty soon, we're asking for uh, first read passage on that. I, it doesn't change what was submitted to the Board of Elections, the, the amount of the levy, anything like that. It's just uh, language they like to see and what they're used to seeing on, a, on the replacement levy. Uh, so just to avoid any issues with Board of Elections, they've asked us to do that. Uh, I, I think it's more like an administrative fix, um, but we would ask council to move as quickly as possible to get that to the Board of Elections. Yeah, and th this to me seems pretty straightforward. I think understandable for uh, anybody reading it when they go to vote. So I'm pleased with it. Is there any other comments from anybody else on council? No. Okay, with that, then I will make a motion to add uh, resolution 69-2020 to tonight's agenda. And it will be waiving second and third readings. Second. There's a motion and second to add uh, resolution number 69-2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading, waiving second and third. Is there any further discussion? Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter D, Cleveland Maslin Assessment, Mr. Pilot. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this assessment is for uh, a total valuation of uh, $48,732.30. Uh, it's for the improvements at South Cleveland Maslin Road. And it's for installing 2,200 linear feet of water line and approximately 1,350 feet of sanitary sewer line. This was petition driven and that value will be assessed completely for the petition. And they can spread that out over 10 years if they so choose. And uh, I don't know if Mr. Fowler or uh, Anybody else has anything to add on that? Just that's not the total project cost. Um, no. To be clear, we have deducted everybody else that's connected. So in any future connection will result in a reduction. So I just wanted to make sure that it, you all understood that that wasn't the total cost of the project. And that was reduced, I think, uh, just for an example, Dollar General paid $35,000 for tap in. So we reduced the assessment by that amount. Okay. 
And this can uh, this can go full three readings, correct? No. Um, we have a time constraint okay. with the assessment. Uh, would ask that it be passed. I think September. Pam, correct me if I'm wrong. I think 14th. It has to be. Yeah, I have to have it to June. the county by the 14th. Yeah. So, uh, so I am planning on having a meeting next Monday, so we can do a second okay. then, and then we should be able to do a third. Yeah, that would be fine. All right. If no one has any other questions. Yeah, can I, it's not related to that, but on meetings place, is there any, uh, when they're going to start building there? We've had a couple of meetings recently, but that was before COVID and uh, so that was the most nothing recent. That you're done. Nothing as of right now. Okay. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All right. Uh, then I will go ahead and make a uh, uh, motion to add ordinance 70 2020 to tonight's agenda for its first reading. I'll second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to add ordinance number 70-2020 to tonight's uh, agenda for first reading only. Is there any further discussion? Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Pilot? Yes. Ms. Whitkey? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter E, New Park Drive Assessment, Mr. Pilot? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this uh, proposed ordinance is for uh, improvements on New Park Drive and Barber Road, trying to improve the flooding issues there. Um, looking at approximately 1,150 feet uh, on the northern side of New Park Drive. Uh, Going construction, improving paving, grading, draining, uh, constructing curbs, driveway aprons, and the dollar amount that would be looking to be assessed is two hundred ninety-five thousand of the one million three hundred and thirty thousand dollar project, uh, and they can pay that over thirty years. Uh, as with any assessment, anybody has the right to pay upfront within 30 days. Uh, they can pay cash for their portion of the assessment and that payment would go to uh, the finance director. And this is just giving the administration the authority to go ahead and move forward with this. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, then I will move uh, to Mr. Fowler. Did, Mr. Fowler. Oh. Just wanted to remind the equalization board did lower one assessment, if you recall. Uh, just want to make you all aware that that one assessment is reduced at the recommendation and the acknowledgement of council. Yeah. Otherwise, all assessments were in accordance with what was uh, agreed to. Uh, during the initial uh, notice to proceed. Yeah, I think that one we had a, a, a copy of in our, in our okay. pack. So. All right, then I will make a motion to add the new park drive assessment ordinance 71 2020 to tonight's agenda. First reading only. Is there a timeline on this, Mr. Flower? Same as long as it passes with the same time frame as the, the previous September ordinance, will be okay. 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 Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second to add new, the uh, new park drive assessment ordinance number 71 2020 to tonight's agenda for a first reading. Is there any further discussion? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Pilot? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Ms. Whitkey? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Moving on to letter F, Ag Pro TIF. Ms. Whipke. Thank you, Mr. President. Basically, this legislation is to allow the property taxes that would normally be going to the county instead to come to the city. 
and that way they can be used for more developments in the area and this that leaves the school taxes unaffected i believe this ag is this the one that was over is over on barber road yes yes it is, yes, it is. Yeah. the old mac tech building and um the the next couple legislations is is also for the same thing as first to a lot of property taxes but if nobody has any questions at this time, I motion to add Ordinance 72 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading only. I'll second. There's a motion and a second to add Ordinance number 72 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading only. Um, is there any further discussion? Full three readings okay on that, Mr. Fowler? Okay. Um, hearing none with the clerk, call the roll, please. Ms. Lipkin? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Tasley? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter D, caliber TIF, uh, Ms. Whipke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, this is to allow the property taxes that would normally be going to the county to come to us so that we can use it for development in air. And again, school income tax is unaffected. And I believe this piece of property is the the car thing, more or less, going in over off of Wooster, going into Doylestown and Eastern Roads. Yep. This time I motion to add Ordinance 73-2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. I'll second. There's a motion and a second to add uh, Ordinance number 73-2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Is there any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Ms. Whitkey? Yes. Mr. Pila? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Garrett? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter H, O'Reilly Tiff, uh, Ms. Whitkey. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, it's the same reasoning as the first, prior two, um, and I believe well, O'Reilly's, that's that um, car parts place up on Cleveland Maslin that went in where the pub or something used to be. The old Norton up. Pub was. Yeah, Norton Pub, yes. Uh, at this time, I motion to add Ordinance 74 2020 to tonight's agenda <coughs> for first reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to add Ordinance number 74 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Is there any further discussion? The only thing I'd like to know, are we going to be um, needing to waive any of the readings in the future? We can go to three readings yeah. or not. Yes, or not. Enemies. It's not important. Okay. Um, would the clerk call the roll, please? Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilar? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter I, new ambulance purchase, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the city's fire program is on pace for a new ambulance as part of their capital improvement plan that was established years ago. Um, so what uh, Chief Schultz had figured out oh, several years ago was that as opposed to just buying a new ambulance, uh, doing a remount saved quite a bit of money. So uh, that's what is proposed in front of us today. Um, one thing I was a little concerned about myself is we did this in 2017 and it was about $107,000 and this year it's almost $127,000. So that's significantly more, but I believe that's still a lot less than um, going with an all new ambulance. Um, in conversation with the chief, I wanted to see some other quotes, but he has let me know that uh, the company that is doing this, which is Excellent Incorporation, they are the only company that offers the remount. So, therefore, we don't really have any other quotes. And any other quotes we would have would be for a brand new ambulance, which would be considerably more. Um, so is there any other uh, questions or conversation? 
Yeah, I think the, the company is Ambulance with Excellence is the name of the company, as I recall. And um, we did discuss this a little bit in Board of Control. It is significantly less expensive um, to buy the new chassis, remount the box, as opposed to buying an entire new um, uh, ambulance. So I'm um, trying to save a little money there. So, And how is the last one holding up? Uh, the good thing is we get a no warranty and the one issue we've had with them, they're, they're fixing. So it was a paint issue. The paint's uh, bubbling. Uh, it's out for service right now before, so it can be back before this one goes out. Uh, and the chief really thinks this is the best way to go. And I have no reason. To and I will say that um, when we get this uh, passed, um, we get in line and we should have it back by early next year so um we should be good to go anything further okay with that i will make a motion to uh add ordinance 76 2020 to tonight's agenda for a first reading uh 70. did I'm you get sorry. that Gary? no which one I, I, I heard uh, jack Yes. All right. It should be 75, shouldn't it? Did I say? Yeah, it's 75. I'm sorry, 75. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I was reading one lower. I apologize. Okay. So uh, we have a motion and second to add ordinance number 75, 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading at this time. Is there any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Whip Ms. Whipke? <laughs> yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kern? Yes. Letter J, uh, new ambulance equipment purchase, Mr. Towsley? Thank you, Mr. President. This is legislation to purchase new equipment being, uh, I'm not familiar with this, but a, a load system and power cap for the ambulance. And my understanding is that is the latest, newest technology and uh, the fire department wants to keep up with the newest technology. The um, um, Go ahead. No, I was just, I didn't mean to cut you off, Paul. Um, we talked about it a little bit, Board of Control, and it is um, a lift system to lift uh, patients. Um, so it is safer for the patient. It's safer for um, the, the, the um, paramedics um, uh, and hopefully to prevent any injuries to either patient or paramedic is the reason for it. Okay, and, and I'm not seeing this right in front of me, but I maybe Mr. Fowler can speak to this. I thought I saw, I can't find it now, I read it earlier, that, that the chief was hopeful to find some kind of grant for this. Is, is that correct, or am I recalling the wrong thing here? Um, yes, he feels that he might be able to use some of the CARES Act dollars, although that was never discussed with me. And... Okay. Um, we may be getting a second allotment of CARES dollars, CARES Act dollars, um, maybe at the beginning of next year, that's still subject to, uh, but we will evaluate that once we see our financial position. For the city. Okay, and, and, and the price on this equipment is $48,598.94. And unfortunately, like the previous one, this is, this is supplied by a company called Stryker Powered Transport, and the chief tells me they are the only company that offers this uh, equipment as well, so that we don't have any other quotes as, for this as well. Is there any other conversation or questions? Mr. Towsley, I will add that we do have the money in the capital fund for the fire department in fund 107. If we don't get, if we don't use that with grant funding money. Okay, it, will, will, will we know before passage of this whether we're gonna get that grant funding money or not? Or are we not sure? I'll let Mr. Fowler speak on that. I will try to find out, uh, again, there, there are so many fluid situations mm -hmm. with some of the CARES Act money, but you know, if it goes three reads, we, we should be okay. I, I sh could have some direction for you. Okay. 
So with that, I will make a motion to add now ordinance 76 to tonight's agenda. Okay. I'll second. There's a motion and a second to add ordinance number 76 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Is there any further discussion? Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Ms. Ripke? Yes. Mr. Pilat? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter K, annual control contact. Uh, Mr. Towsley again. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is just what it says, the animal control contract. The, the city typically holds an animal control contract. It, unless I'm wrong, this is kind of boilerplate. It's just renewing what we've had in the past with Summit County. It, it is a continuation of the um, prior contract, is my understanding. We discussed this also at um, Board of Control. So no significant changes, I don't think, to this. Anything else? Okay, then I'll make a motion to add ordinance number 77-2020 to tonight's. Uh, I'll second. There's a motion and a second to add ordinance number 77-2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Any further, any further discussion? The clerk call the roll, please. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Pilat? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Ms. Wilkie? Yes. Mr. Pilat? I'm sorry, Mr. Kernan? Yes. Um, letter L, Healthcare Consortium Proposal, Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yes, uh, we're thinking about uh, uh, replacing uh, the COSI plan. Uh, all the um, employees for uh, City of Norton received a letter and um, Robert and everyone had checked into it. There's not a whole lot of changes or if there is any that move to the South Central Ohio Insurance Cordium. So uh, this is something they were they're looking into for uh, December 2020 change in insurance plans. It's really uh, going from medical mutual to sick death is really what it's all about. And maybe in the future we could save some money too by making this move. I'm sorry, Dennis, you said moving from. Uh, it's from really, well, cozy plan right now is medical mutual. The new South Central Ohio insurance Contorium is really Cigna. So, Cigna. really, it's, yeah, so it's kind of moving uh, medical mutual to a Cigna plan. What do we know about Cigna? Well, from I what I heard from Robert, it, the, all the employees they did check, it does move uh, the uh, doctors that they're seeing now is like a clean sweep of seeing the same ones in Cigna. Correct, yeah, Robert? Mr. Fowler, go ahead. So earlier last year, so 2019, we started the process to evaluate um, insurances for the upcoming renewal. Uh, we really considered the mayor, Justin, uh, Ron and I at the time, uh, considered moving this way last year, um, towards the end of the year, like December. Uh, we decided to stick it out through the term of our contract with Medical Mutual, um, but, the initial conversations we had with the consortium is longer term, we're going to save money. Uh, maybe not in year one, but over the course of a three year period, we could save significant dollars. And thus, uh, we started the process. So just councils aware of what we did. We brought in the person that M OML, how municipal league has that manages this program for them. They met with each individual employee. They gave them a sheet to fill out. They discussed their doctor, their medical needs, et cetera. Um, the biggest concern I had from an administrative standpoint was making sure that everybody's doctor was part of the Cigna Health Group. Everybody's doctor was, uh, so there'll be some consistency with our healthcare um, administration. It doesn't change copays, doesn't change deductibles, it changes nothing other than we go from COSI. Uh, Medical Mutual to Sigma. Other questions? 
That was my next question was about the deductibles and everything and the employees. So uh, if that's been done, that settles me. That's, I don't have any problem. Anyone else? Okay, with that, I'd like to put this on uh, 78 2020 uh, for first reading tonight on uh, tonight's agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second to add uh, ordinance number 78 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Uh, is there any further discussion? Questions? Is there any time period on this? Does anybody know any, anything needs to be done? <laughs> ASAP. Well, it's uh, December 2020, so we should go three readings. Okay. okay. And did you have something? Yeah, just a question. Since my area of expertise is healthcare, um, looking at their prescription benefits, I just wonder if anyone knew who the processor would be. For Cigna, I think that was going to be Caremark, is what I recall, but I'm not sure. It's a, They were bought out by Anthem in 2015, I think. Does anyone know who that processor is going to be? And if if not offhand, can we get a get that information before the next meeting? <coughs> Mr. Fowler, do you know that? Could you repeat the question? I apologize. I That's okay. Just asking who the processor for the pharmaceutical benefits would be <laughs> with Cigna, uh, if anyone actually knows that. One of my concerns, and I raised this a couple of years ago, was the concern that the Columbus Dispatch brought out over the past two years. There's around 200 articles about Caremark and about Express Scripts having built the state of Ohio for about $244 million, is what I recall. And the attorney general is suing them for uh, damages. I just wonder who is administering the uh, plan, the pharmaceutical uh, part of that plan. Do we know that or can we find that out? I will find that out. Yeah, okay. If we're going three ratings, there's nothing urgent. I just would like to know and I think it'd be a, a wise thing to keep an eye on. Thank you. Um, Robert, yeah. if you can get that to us whenever you get that information, that'd be great. If okay. I could. Dan, do you have a preference? Honestly, there are some new players coming out. I saw Humana uh, just offered something. I don't, I can't say I have a huge preference because Robert may not have a lot of choices as he goes with a group. So it's just something I think is important to, to watch. And after you have the plan to actually keep an eye on, I can give some pointers on that. But to say one's better than another, the key is who, what, what their track record has been and performance. And I'd look, point you towards some of the articles in the Columbus Dispatch that are talking about PBMs or pharmacy benefit managers. It's probably the largest growing part of the expense of healthcare dollars that's being spent right now. The largest increase is really pharmaceutical. And it used to be the best buy of all healthcare was pharmaceutical, not anymore. Uh, the only reason I ask your preference is uh, I belong to SCRS and they they use Express Script for their pharmaceuticals and uh, well I'm not going to say one way or another I I'm not an expert so I uh, Express Script uh, I I don't know which would be the better I don't have a clue as far as utilization. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a conversation that probably doesn't belong in council, but exactly. I, I have some opinions. Again, I may be a little biased and it's not going to be helpful to council. It's just keeping an eye on the expenditures as we move forward. I would just keep an eye on that that sector. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's it's important to have that information. So if Mr. Fowler can get to that to us, then we'll have that information. And, um, you know, if ultimately there is a switch, then it's good to know that so that we can keep an eye on things. So I appreciate that. Um, is there any further discussion regarding 78-2020? Was there a motion and a second on that one yet, uh, Carrie? Yes, I, I motion. Ms. Ripke seconded. All right. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Mr. McLean? Yes. Ms. Ripke? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrick? Yes. Mr. Towsley? 
Yes. Mr. Pilat. Yes. Mr. Kernan. Yes. Thank you. Righty. Um, letter M, equipment disposal, ordinance number 79, 2020, that falls to me. Um, as we do every year or every couple of years anyway, uh, we have some equipment that uh, has outlived its usefulness to the city of Norton that we need to authorize disposal of. I think everybody received an exhibit attached um, to the ordinance. There's a six by 12 trailer, an air and snow blower, Toro zero turn 50 inch mower, Yanmar uh, lawn tractor, four drawer cart, top box, toolbox, craftsman, steel bench with vice, bottom box, Mac tool brand, 2008 Hyundai Santa, Santa Fe, 2006 Dodge Charger, white travel trailer, 2008 Honda ATV, and 1995 Suzuki Quad Runner ATV. Um, and th that stuff will be, um, is that going to be done like we would normally do that, an online auction type thing? Is that what we're going to do? We're actually yeah. doing that in person. Are we doing silent bid, Robert? Silent bid. Silent bid. Okay. Is there any questions regarding that? Are there any questions regarding that? Well, yes. Uh, how will that be advertised? Uh, just through the website or... Uh, Will there be newspaper advertisements as a public sale? How, how will that be advertised? And will the list be provided with the advertisement? I think that's usually done on our website, isn't it? I, I don't know. I, I just thought it'd be nice to know how it's going to be advertised. Robert? Sorry, I can't figure this zoom out. That's today. okay. Um, you know, it, we can, we can, place an ad I don't I mean the concern I have is we're going to spend an inordinate amount of money to place an ad and yeah. get very little on return um, we have some things we can put on gov deals we did that with the recent fire truck uh, sale um, you know I think we're going to have to evaluate we're going to set minimum bids and if we don't reach that threshold then we reject those bids but uh, I, I think Mr. Gaynor does bring up a good point of we have to get the word out you know, we yeah, can I think use our we, social uh, media. We can use our social media as well. Yeah, and we've, um, I mean, we've done this every year, every couple of years. So I would assume that what's worked in the past will work in the future. So, um, I, excuse me, Joe, I just didn't, sure. rem I didn't remember there being a list published. Uh, there could have been, but I don't remember it. And, and I think there should be wherever it's published on Facebook or, or uh, on our website or wherever. I think we should always can uh have a list uh, uh, attached to it so people will know what's there okay uh, also is is can can a date be provided or a, a time range of when bids will be open and closed that, that would be helpful i think if, if mr kernan if we may yes. mm -hmm. so let's uh if we can uh push this off till next week i think sure. we can get you dates for uh, advertisement web, all that prepared for you. That way we can announce at the next meeting what those dates are. Do you want to hold off then on the first reading? No, I think we could do the first reading, but okay. I think okay. before we pass it, I think Mr. Tellis brings up a good point. Okay. We should tell people when to expect these items on uh, on auction. Sounds good. We'll do it. A, we'll give it a first reading then tonight. Is there any further discussion? All right, then I move to add ordinance number 79, 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. I'll second. There's a motion and second to add ordinance number 79, 2020 to tonight's agenda for first reading. Is there any further discussion? Would the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Kernan? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. <laughs> Yes. All right. Um, uh, letter N, Mr. Towsley, ordinance number 80-2020. Thank you, Mr. President. This is an ordinance for the Barberton Jail Agreement. Uh, this agreement's actually for this year and the remainder of this year. It's for an amount of $16,753. And... Um, my understanding is is that, um, as you said, Mr. Cowsley, this is just a continuation of the, the prior agreement that's in place. 
Um, no significant changes to it is my understanding. Right. If my recollection is right, this is kind of a formula based on yeah. uh, the communities involved and, and the percentages based on how many you know criminals get put in. Kind of use based. Right. Yep. So there's 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 nothing changing. We're just agreeing to the same thing we've we've had since last year. Right. If I could, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Gaynor, I, I know everyone's noticed uh, the articles about the jail uh, problem uh, as far as space is concerned and everything. Um, has, has all this been taken into consideration? Is Barberton presently able uh, because there was some concern about them being able to handle such and such a prisoners in the articles I've read and also the Summit County Jail is having a problem uh, uh, accepting fel uh, misdemeanors I believe or maybe even low level felonies or something uh, is that all taken into consideration before we extend this contract? All I'm asking you, do, do they have the capacity to, Mr. Fowler, fulfill, go ahead. to fulfill the contract? Yes. Yeah, the, the county jail issues are around budget. It's a it's a budget between the sheriff and the county council uh, more than it is um, capacity. They have capacity. They just don't have the, the staffing to to open those wings. And that's really the issue of the county. But there's no issue for that at Barbara and yeah, I was going to say, as I recall, um, when we put this together, uh, we, we took into consideration that there were a certain number of beds that we would have available to us if we needed them. Um, and then overflow would, uh, if necessary, would go to Summit County. And then there were other places that, that we could, if we needed to. So, Anything further? Uh, yes, Mr. President. I'm just wondering, can... We amend this to actually put the dollar amount in here into the ordinance itself. I know if you go on and you read the, um, I guess you would call it the exhibits or something that it has dollar amount, but it's not on the actual, I don't believe it is. I'm trying to find it. Yes, it's the dollar amount is not listed on the ordinance itself. I just like to have the dollar, when we know a set dollar amount, I like to have it in the ordinance. You mean uh, in addition to it referring to exhibit A? Yeah, because a lot of times that doesn't show up right away, but we know we're going to be paying the 16753 for sure, correct? Uh, and I think um, Mr. Fowler is trying to answer me. Mr. Fowler, go ahead. Um, the one reason we don't, I think Justin was going to work on this ordinance before passage. I don't want to speak for him, but the concern I have is repeatedly coming back to council every year. Like this is way late. We're already, you know, August 24th and we just got this jail agreement. So I think what Justin was going to work on with Lisa prior to passage, Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, is we were going to, it was going to be formula based and going forward, we wouldn't have to bring this count to council every year unless there were significant changes to the wording of the contract. Is that and Justin? Is that fair? Yep. Okay. So, so in answering Ms. Whipke's question, my understanding then is, is we will be seeing a new ordinance anyway and we'll be needing to amend if we put this on the agenda tonight for a first reading, we're going to need to amend. Justin. Yeah. So I, yeah, exactly. There would be the intent would be to put a provision in where the agreement would roll from year to year, an evergreen provision. Uh, so you'd have an amended exhibit, but the dollar amount could change from year to year. So we could put in there the, the maximum amount for county year twenty, if that's what uh, Miss Whipke wants. But the intention is to have an agreement that would govern for many years. Obviously, that amount will still have to come back to council for appropriation every year, but the the agreement will be in place. Okay. All right. So we can add the not to exceed language for the year 2020 uh, and add that language into whatever you're bringing forward. And then we would have a rolling agreement each year. Then the amount of the agreement would be handled at the time of budgeting. Right. 
So I think just to handle Miss Miss Whipke's concern and just uh, in an amount not to exceed sixteen seven fifty. If you put that right before the emergency clause in the title, I think that handles uh, what she's looking for, which is being able to figure out what the obligation is. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I, I just like when we're spending money. I like to have that money that amount in the ordinance itself. I think I've stated that before. Okay. Yeah. Anything further on that one? Thank you. All righty. Okay, hearing no other comments, I will make a motion to add ordinance 80 2020 to tonight's meeting for its first reading. I'll okay. second. There's a motion and a second to add ordinance number 80 2020 to tonight's agenda for a first reading. Is there any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Ms. Lipke? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter O, GPD contract extension, Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, uh, we're here to renew the GPD uh, engineering contract. We've had them for three and a half years. They've saved us some money and uh, we want to uh, get them for another three additional years. Uh, $50,000 a year not to exceed. Further discussion? I, I'd just like to add that I think this has been pretty successful going this route the last three years. I've, yeah. I've, I've appreciated the, the relationship that we've built and the work they've done for us. I, I agree with you, Mr. Towsley. I think they've done a good job. Me too. So I'd like to put uh, 81 2020 on tonight's agenda for its first reading. I'll second. second. There's a motion and a second to add ordinance number 80 2020. 81. Sorry, 81 2020 to tonight's agenda for its first reading. Is there any further discussion? Clear call the roll, please. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter P, GPD COVID-19 building upgrade, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a, a legislation to enter an agreement with GPD uh, for professional engineering services in connection with COVID-19 building safety. This is um, attempts to upgrade the administration building council chambers uh, to make it more, I guess you would call it COVID compliant, to make it safer for the, the distancing and uh, traffic moving in and out of any areas in the city buildings. Uh, the legislation says that it's not to exceed 39,000, but the exhibit says 35,000. And I believe the exhibit is actually the correct number. Yeah, it should. We talked about this also at Border Control. It should be thirty-five thousand dollars. So the thirty-nine thousand is a typographical error. And uh, I, I, I have to be honest. When I first saw this, I, I kind of hesitate at the thirty-five thousand dollar for engineering costs. Um, but my understanding is this is uh, from talking to Mr. Fowler. This is this money will come from the CARES Act, and Actually, the the more we do under the CARES Act, the better opportunity we have to receive further CARES Act money. So it, it could benefit the city in that regard and also make the uh, facilities safer as far as the COVID-19 goes. Yeah, I think one of the things that we talked about was, um, uh, as you said, it's CARES Act money. Some of this is used for plans. Some of it, I think, is used for some uh, initial construction, if I'm not uh, misstating that, Mr. Fowler. Um, and um, what we're hoping is, is that we can get the building opened up more quickly to the, to the general public and, and be able to have people back in again, do things instead of like this. And have real Little meetings. Yay! Real meetings, so. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Kernan, because that's a, a point that was helpful to me to know that uh, this this will be to the benefit of the public for them to yeah. 
get in and out of our buildings and have a little bit more contact with their government again. And that, that is important. Well, they, they need to be able to do that. Absolutely. So Mr. Fowler, did I misstate any of that? No, the only thing I wanted to add is that the 35,000 does include contract administration. Again, oh, nothing will go. Place. Yeah. Um, nothing will go without having a discussion beforehand. And secondly, as I, um, Mr. Towsley indicated, our goal is to acquire CARES Act funding um, to make this ha uh, happen um, because we're not, we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for this current situation. I wouldn't be looking to spread out the council, uh, the council room for you all so we get your six feet so I can get you into a council meeting in person uh, if this wasn't the current situation. So this is all driven by us trying to one, as Mr. Towsley indicated, get back to some sense of normalcy and provide our public and our employees with safety to do their jobs. Uh, if I could, Jack. Joe, mm -hmm. um, so just so I completely understand, it doesn't matter whether it's 39 or 35, the 35,000 Mr. Fowler is, is for engineering costs and some construction management. Yeah. And, and we do not know yet, I referred to the exhibit and, and uh, couldn't quite understand that. Uh, we don't know yet exactly what we're gonna do until they design it. So we won't know until they design it, what it will cost us um, to build what they design. Is, is that correct? Yep. Correct. And, and, and again, there may be some things we discuss that I'm just throwing a hypothetical out there. And again, they may say, well, you need a new HVAC to turn the air over with a, with a different percentage. And we may say, well, our priority is getting council chambers in the, in the entrance and exit uh, compliant more than HVAC. So our goal would be to, in a budget, figure out what we want to do and what will get us open and provide our employees the safety they deserve. I, I noticed some places they're uh, using this spray equipment to, uh, to uh, spray areas that kills the COVID-19 within two hours or something. Um, is, is this gonna, will this be part of the uh, thought process for them to do things other than physical barriers or? Uh, uh, Ms. Keener and I have discussed some other uh, um, opportunities. I don't think we'll buy any uh, decontamination equipment with it. Um, you know, the fire chief and I had discussed when this all started, uh, the purchase of some decon equipment. Uh, it was very, very, very expensive, I think to the tune of $50,000 a unit. Um, of course it is now, right? That's everybody's <laughs> buying one. Um, uh, but you know, that we need to be looking at that outside of what we do for renovation. Okay, the decontamination. Anything further? Okay, hearing none, I will make a motion to add Ordinance 82-2020 to tonight's agenda for a first reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to add Ordinance 82-2020 for its first reading tonight. Is there any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Ms. Wimke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan. Yes. All right, consideration of minutes. The minutes of the regular council meeting of July 6, 2020. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those minutes? <clears throat> those minutes will be accepted then as submitted. Reports from officers, boards, and commissions. Mayor Zita. Uh, thank you. I just uh, would like to say that um, I just want to thank everyone for uh, all that they've done it's through administration, through staff, and so forth. Uh, helping us work through um, all of the, you know, the, the, the things that we're going through with, with the COVID and, and everything that's coming up and, and so forth. We're, we're continuing to work, continuing to get things done, um, continuing, continuing to uh, progress uh, through the city. And uh, I just, like I said, I will 
but I'd like to just thank everyone for continuing to do the good job that they're doing in order to uh, taking care of the needs of the city and uh, keeping things going. And that's all I have at this point in time. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Fowler? I have just, just a couple items uh, of significance. Uh, first, you know, I, I don't know how many council people were aware that um, a lot of our employees stepped up during the summer and took furlough days unpaid. Um, and, and when the mayor speaks of it's a team effort, um, Pam and I, Ms. Keener and I have been really watching the budget and we have some concerns in the service line item. Um, just to let you know, we're probably gonna furlough our service, voluntary furlough for our service employees starting uh, next week, one day a week um, until snowplow season, which will be the first of November. Uh, the concern we have is the gas tax revenue is reduced because, of course, from about March 15th to the middle of May, no one was driving. Uh, we saw a significant reduction there. But again, we're doing what we can administratively to make adjustments to account for those. I just wanted you to be aware that a lot of our employees, everybody was willing to step up, but the service people, our service employees and our clerical people really stepped up to, to help uh, and made it very easy. So I just wanted to let you all know that that was part of that. Um, most of our projects are wrapping up. I think maybe you noticed Cleveland Maslin Road. Uh, they have some um, some drainage issues we have to address and also uh, some striping and signage. Uh, it's not done, but we got the pavement done before school was supposed to start. Uh, unfortunately, they're not in class, but the road is done uh, and most of the major work has been completed. Um, I know some of you have some punch list items. I've, I've assured those people that have those concerns, we will address them. Uh, we will make sure they're addressed and we have a contingency or there's a, there's a portion of our a retainage that we will hold back at least 10% until all those project uh, issues are addressed. So, uh, but it looks great and uh, that's kind of where we are for now. It does, it does look great. <laughs> it does look good. Mr. Pilot? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't know if one of the areas, when you say signage, I saw some complaints uh, online talking about uh, Cleveland Masson Road South there, right around the right, plaza. People are saying that it's confusing as they're going down through there to what lane to be in and so forth, and indicated that some of the signs are actually incorrect. No, the signage is correct. The, the striping is not on the street to indicate which way to merge. Once that striping's on, that'll help alleviate a lot of that confusion. But, but uh, we did talk about that today about the possibility of switching the uh, which to, which lane merges. Okay. I have a question. What about that stop sign that was done at the railroad tracks? Is that still there? <laughs> it's. <laughs> Okay, that was crazy. Um, we met on that last it, week, but that's yeah. okay. Robert, go ahead and talk about it. That's all. Um, so to give council a quick update on that, I think you should be aware. Um, ODOT signed an agreement with the railroad unbeknownst to us. Right. Uh, and that obligated us to about $400,000 in improvements. Um, of course, I think you all know me well enough to know where I stood on that. Um, and the mayor and I went to ODOT last week and met with the director, explain, explaining to him our concern. Um, one, it was not to be repaired at its current state. It was going to be upgraded. And, and the cost was borne by the North, city of Norton and our Norton taxpayers. We, the mayor and I both, uh, agreed that we should not bore that expense. Uh, so we had a meeting with ODOT. They've agreed to a slimmed down version uh, I told him, I think what we would be willing to spend is about $10,000 at most. Um, and the reason those stop signs were there was because the sidewalk abruptly stopped. It is for the sidewalk and not the railroad crossing. It is very confusing. We asked for the stop signs to be moved to the other side. Problem is that's railroad right away and they wouldn't let us do that. So once the project becomes ours, we either remove them or bag them. But until that is done, uh, the, the Wheeling Lake Erie has asked, or ABC actually uh, is a subsidiary, but uh, they have asked for those to remain up to, so someone doesn't get injured. Can, can you just put railroad on the sign? 
I, Mr. Towson, we all talked about this is for this is for the sidewalk. It really should say sidewalk or yeah, pedestrian, sorry, right. pedestrian, not street. And and we've talked. The mayor and I not even brought that up. Can we just put for pedestrians? Because I say this, and it's not in jest. We actually had a police officer pull over a resident for not stopping at the stop sign originally, and so the stop signs aren't uniform. They're not the, the size of a regular stop sign. So uh, it's an issue and, and we have been discussing how to address that, but we've even discussed the four pedestrian or, or sidewalk traffic. I come through there. I almost got rear ended because, Hey, I see a stop sign. It means right. stop. Right. It doesn't mean keep on going. And I know other people have had the same issue, but they're little itty bitty stop signs. So you don't see it till you're right on top of it. Unless you've been come aware that it's there. That that's just BS. Them them people aren't right in the head, right? Even want anything out there like that uh, for anybody to have to think about. What if, do they want to get sued? I mean, who's you? You're not. So if anybody runs it, they're not going to get a ticket from no, us. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a road. It's for the sidewalk. But what happens if they stop and then they get rear-ended? Oh, that's the I, person. I mean, a rear ending, stupid. <laughs> Not actually. Have you seen that stop sign? It's a baby. Uh, if I could, Joe, real sure. quick, uh, uh, I, I would like to thank whoever is responsible for uh, the repair of both ends of the bridge here on 261 over 21. Uh, Larry Hess told me that he thought this was going to happen. And it is happening. Uh, that was a bad bump at each end. And so now that they're doing the exits and everything, they're including it up to that bump and it's going to be repaired, it looks like. Yep. So whoever was responsible, ODOT or whoever, ODOT. I'm awful glad they did it because I've had a lot of complaints about kerthump, kerthump as you go over that. So now it's going to be repaired from the looks of things. and. Anybody that's interested in that area will see a lot of improvement right there. Uh, Mr. President, real quick before we close this part, if, if I may. Mr. Uh, I have a question probably for Mr. Fowler on Eastern Road and 585. I was hoping for an update. I'm pretty sure that w that road was supposed to be open the 1st of August, and it, I don't think it's closed right now. So I'll just look for an update. It's still closed. I talked to Mr. Hess today about Eastern Road. Um, I think their intention is after Labor Day to do some paving of the median, which the J-turn then would be open and operational. So I'm going to guess that it's probably September. The end of September, the road improvement should be done in their entirety. OK. Anything else for Mr. Fowler, Ms. Keener? I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Mr. Markey. Nothing. Thank you. Uh, moving on to public hearings. We have none. Introduction of new legislation. Resolution number 69-2020. Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> President. I offer resolution number 69-2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. A resolution to amend resolution number 57 2020 passed on May 11, 2020, and resolution number 61, 2020 passed on July 6, 2020 to clarify certain terms of those resolutions and declaring an emergency. And again, this is uh, for ballot language to go on the ballot for uh, an increase of uh, renewal and, or I guess you'd call it a replacement and an increase of one mil to the current fire levy. Um, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to waive second and third readings. Second. There's a motion and a second to waive the second and third readings of resolution number 69, 2020. Further discussion regarding suspension? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McGlone? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pila? Yes. Mr. Kernan. Yes. Just need a motion. Sorry. 
Yeah, okay. I would like to make a motion to adopt resolution 69 2020. Second. There's a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 69 2020. Any further discussion? Will the clerk call the roll, please? Mr. Towsley? Yes. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Flynn? Yes. Ordinance number 70, 2020, Mr. Pilot. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to offer Ordinance 70, 2020 for its first reading. Ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance declaring the necessity of determining to proceed with and levying special assessments for the improvement of South Cleveland Maslin Road, all in accordance with a petition submitted by the property owners and declaring an emergency. Uh, that is first reading only. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Pilot. Uh, ordinance number 71, 2020, Mr. Pilot. I'd like to offer ordinance 71, 2020 for its first reading. Ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance loving special assessments for New Park Drive project and declaring an emergency. That one's first reading only as well. Thank you. Ordinance number 72, 2020, Ms. Whitley. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance number 72, 2020 for its first reading. Ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance declaring the improvements to certain real property within the city to be public purpose, describing the public improvements to be made to directly benefit such parcels, exempting such improvements from Avalon real property taxation, requiring the owner of the improvements to make service payments in lieu of Avalon real property taxes, and establishing a municipal improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of the service payments in lieu of Avalon property taxes, all pursuant to sections 5709.40, 5709.42, and 5709.43 of the revised code and declared an emergency. First reading only, thank you. Thank you, ordinance number 73, uh, 2020, Ms. Whipke. I offer ordinance 73, 2020 for its first reading. Ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance declaring the improvements to certain real property within the city to be a public purpose, describing the public improvements to be made to directly benefit such parcels, exempting such improvements from ad valorem rural property taxation, requiring the owner of the improvements to make service payments in lieu of ad valorem rural property taxes, and establishing a municipal improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of the service payments in lieu of ad valorem property taxes, all pursuant to sections 5709.40, 5709.42, and 5709.43 of the advised code and declaring an emergency. First reading only, thank you. Thank you, ordinance number 74, 2020, Ms. Whipke. I offer ordinance 74, 2020 for its first reading. Ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance declaring the improvements to certain rural property within the city to be a public purpose, describing the public improvements to be made to directly benefit such parcels, exempt, exempting such improvements from ad valorem rural property taxation, requiring the owner of the improvements to make service payments in lieu of ad valorem rural property taxes, and establishing a municipal improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of the service payments in lieu of ad valorem property, real, ad valorem property taxes, all pursuant to section 5709.40, 5709.42, and 5709.43 of the revised code and declaring an emergency. First reading only, thank you. Thank you. It's a good thing we don't have any more of those. Carrie wouldn't be able to read much more. <laughs> ordinance number 75, 2020, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance number 75, 2020 for its first reading and ask the book to read it, please. An ordinance authorizing the purchase remount of a Ford E450 ambulance for the Division of Fire and Emergency Medical Services at a cost not to exceed $129,127. <clears throat> First reading only. Thank you. Ordinance number uh, 76, 2020, Mr. Towsley. I'd like to offer ordinance number 76, 2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of a power cot and power load system for the Division of Fire and Emergency Medical Services at a cost not to exceed $48,600. First reading only. Thank you. Ordinance number 77, 2020, Mr. Towsley. 
Thank you. I'd like to offer ordinance number 77 2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance authorizing the administrative officer to execute and deliver a renewal of intergovernmental agreement for animal control services with the County of Summit, Ohio. First reading only. Thank you, Mr. Towsley. Ordinance number 78 uh, 2020, Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance 78 2020 for its first reading. Ask clerk to read it, please. <laughs> An ordinance authorizing the administrative officer to execute a consortium agreement and bylaws for the South Central Ohio Insurance Consortium Council of Governments for the purpose of administration of health benefits for the city of Norton, Ohio. First reading only. Thank you. Ordinance number 79-2020 falls to me. I offer ordinance number 79-2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance declaring certain city properties as no longer needed for municipal purposes and authorizing the administrative officer to advertise the proposed sale of said property. And that's for first reading only tonight. Ordinance number 80-2020, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance number 80-2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of an agreement for the boarding of prisoners with the city of Barberton for calendar year. 2020 and declaring an emergency. And that's a first reading only. Thank you, Mr. Towsley. Ordinance number 81 2020, Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance 81 2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it, please. An ordinance confirming the mayor's appointment of Glaus, Pyle, Schammer, Burns, and Dehaven Incorporated as the municipal engineer pursuant to section 5.06C of the Charter of the City of Norton, Ohio. First reading only. Thank you. Ordinance number 82, 2020, Mr. Towsley. Thank you, Mr. President. I offer ordinance number 82, 2020 for its first reading and ask the clerk to read it. An ordinance to authorize the administrative officer to enter into an agreement with GPD Group for Professional Engineering Services in connection with CARES Act facility renovations in an amount not to exceed 35,000 and declaring an emergency. And that's first reading as well. Thank we you. We need to move forward with that at this time so they can start making the engineering plans so we can figure out how best to keep the employees there at the administration building uh, safe. And does Mr. that Fowler. include any other buildings or just the administration building? Mr. Fowler? It's just the administration building at this point. Uh, but uh, to Mr. Pilot's point, because the, uh, the initial work is under 10,000 and it's already been approved by Board of Control, we can start the design. So it, it can be passed next week would be fine, if that would be it. Okay, thank you. Um, there is no introduction of prior legislation. Are there any public service announcements, Mayor Zita? I have none this evening, thank you. Anything else from anyone for public service announcements? Not for public service, but just a question in general. Uh, the audit uh, report that we received, are there anything that we need to follow up with on that? Uh, putting in new uh, protocols or anything for the findings in that audit? Yeah, some of the recommendations we're going to follow up on, yes. Okay. Anything okay. further? I had sent one question and asked Carrie to ask uh, neighboring communities uh, if they had any ordinances in place for, regarding drones. Uh, there was a email that we received from a resident. Somebody was flying a drone around in their neighborhood and uh, flying it over people's backyards and stuff like that. And they felt you know, an invasion of privacy and currently, I don't believe we have anything on the books. Uh, we just go with state regulations, but I don't know that it addresses that. Well, well even if it did, even if the state legislation does address it, we can still make it more stringent. Right. Uh, it, and say, no, you can't do this. Well, or if you get shot down or you get broke down, whatever it is. Over on my I, property, too bad for you. I mean, I would assume that the airspace is controlled by the federal government or something. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, 
I've never heard of any legislation. People have concerns about drones. Um, well, I know that there's state reg, uh, legislation in place on drones and needing to be licensed and they can only go to certain heights and things like that. However, you know, maybe we need to uh, at least look into it a little more, look at uh, do we need to have some type of legislation brought forward to protect people's privacy? I mean, I believe so. I mean, it, it, what's the difference if you're climbing up a tree next door so you can see in my backyard and what's going on, or you're actually sending a drone over to be nosy and record it on top of that? I think we need it. Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's already uh, uh, laws in place about 300 feet heights and things that, that, uh, uh, a person's airspace above his property it concerns. Yeah, you know what I'm referring to? Yeah, I'm not sure about drone law. I'm not very good at that. So I, I'll need to look into that and figure out what other people are doing, what's out there and what uh, other people are doing. We can call you the drone king from now on. That'd be our I do like the drone on. Uh, I was just going to make that joke, but you took it from me. <laughs> all right anything further all right is there a motion to adjourn so moved all in favor say aye aye, aye. and we aye. are adjourned aye. good night everybody night. Good, night. Good, night. good night all right thank god